This is an overview of the Design Management in Construction CPD or Continued Professional Development course. It is written and hosted by myself, Leanne Ardendorf. I'm an architect and I've worked as a design manager and overall I have around 24 years experience. Let's have a look in more detail at who the course is for. As you can see on the screen, this course is for anyone who works in the built environment, from architects and engineers, and subcontractors, and those who work in the trades, as well as design coordinators and technical managers who want to further their careers. So what do you get? The course consists of 41 modules, we comprise more than six and a half hours of video, and these video presentations have subtitles in Polish, Spanish and Chinese. There are 20 handouts to study and read, as well as 16 short tests, which need to be passed before getting a certificate of completion at the end. Let's have a look in more detail at the specific topics which are covered in the course. First are the chapters which define the basics of design and technical management. We should clarify what it means at the very outset of the course, because it is a fairly new standalone role, which has only recently become commonplace within the construction industry here in the United Kingdom. We will look at the different types of design and technical managers, as well as the impact of funding, procurement, and also what it means to work with the design team. If you come from a design background, you will already know a lot of this first module, but delivering the design as a design manager has its own unique requirements and challenges as opposed to working on producing the design as a consultant. The next six chapters cover the delivery design managers who work with main contractors and subcontractors specifically those who are involved in contractor-led or design-build developments. Another important part of the job involves the appointment of architects, engineers and other designers and agreeing the clauses, fees and detailed scope of services with each one. Then, integrating the design information produced by specialist subcontractors is an important part of the design manager's job. This includes looking at procurements of subcontract works and working closely with the surveyors and the commercial teams. The next seven modules cover the all-important tools for reporting on design progress and tracking design delivery. There are trackers, matrices, schedules and other tools which all monitor change control and compliance with the contract and statutory regulations. We also explore the design delivery frameworks with a particular emphasis on the RIBA plan of work. And finally, there are chapters covering transferable skills and those skills perhaps missing for anyone entering the design management profession. So there you have it. If you have any more questions, please do stay in touch. You can email me or you can connect on LinkedIn, message me that way. You can also connect with the Design Management Consultancy on LinkedIn, and you can find us on Facebook, and of course on Twitter. And there is more information on the website, studydesignmanagement.online. I look forward to any questions, and I also look forward to any feedback, as I want to keep the course as up-to-date as possible. And finally, if you're interested in collaborating, I'm very open to anyone who might be interested in, in hosting a new module or contributing in any way. Thank you very much for watching and good luck.